All right, we're going to call the meeting to order. It's April 13th. It's the meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're recording this meeting on Zoom. Um, and um, what I'll do, is <clears throat> I'll start by reading the, uh, the agenda so everybody knows what we're going to be doing. Uh, first, it's the minutes of the uh, April 9th meeting. We have three warrants, meetings attended by select board members, public comments, old business. We have to vote on a colonial proposal for aggregation. Uh, we have town meeting vote to postpone. Uh, we're going to table the further discussion on the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grant. Uh, new business, we're sending the town report. We're going to discuss sending the town report uh, before the warrant. Uh, we're going to talk about a policy of reopening the warrant uh, for a um, community preservation committee um, recommendation for pandemic related rent assistance. Uh, we have a memorandum of agreement regarding the first responder uh, quarantine facilities. We have to vote to accept the highway maintenance building project. Uh, items not anticipated. Then we have Tom's update in terms of the selectmen mail announcements and that's the end of the meeting. All right. First item is minutes of the April 9th meeting. Has everybody reviewed those minutes? Yeah, they look good. Thanks for getting them out quickly. Yep. Bob, did you review them? Yep. Okay. Everybody all set with them? No change yeah. additions? No. Set. Okay. Okay. Right, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we accept the, uh, that we approve the minutes of the April 9th meeting. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Um, we have three warrants, a vendor warrant for $60,872, a payroll warrant of $110,089, a payroll deduction warrant of $27,684. I'll make a motion that we, that we accept those warrants. So I have a second. Yes. Bob, you seconded. Okay, all in yep. favor. Philip. So um, yeah, I'm fine with them. I just have a question about them. Just just because I never saw a co the COVID nineteen emergency budget line item before. So uh, just wanted to ask Tom how 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 is that created and how does that work? Uh, that's created so that we can track expenses for eventual FEMA reimbursement. Ah. Uh, so. That's an expense item. So, right? yeah. 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 No, um, I, I thought that I thought that the way that you sent them out, it was easier for me to use on my computer and to go through them. So I don't know how it was different, but I never found them as easy to work with before. So whatever you did, I liked it. <laughs> oh, okay. good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So Phil, you're a yes. Yes. And Bob, you're a yes. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay, so those warrants are passed. Meetings attended by select board members. Did anybody attend any meetings? Yeah, yeah. Friday was a, Philip? Friday was a Frontier um, uh, Regional School Committee meeting. Um, not <laughs> more of the same. So, yeah, um, okay. but that, that was about it. Bob? Uh, we, well, we had a, a cable advisory meeting this morning, and I want, I'll talk a little more about it. Well, I can talk about it right now, but basically we are finishing up what's called the ascertainment for Comcast, which is all of the kind of justification that we provide the Comcast for why we believe we would like more money than they gave us last last time or, a, you know, a good deal more money for all the things that, that FCAT is trying to do. And, and so... So uh, Bill Solomon, our lawyer, is writing that up, and our plan is on Wednesday to submit that. To We're going to have another meeting with Comcast on Wednesday, and they'll have gotten it uh, on Tuesday from Bill, and then we're going to be talking about it. And at some point coming up, we're going to actually be giving them the, the new franchise agreement. We have to come to an agreement with them on how much money they're paying and 
and what we'll get for PEG and things like that. But we're getting there. Okay, great. Um, I did not have any meetings last week. Uh, I was in on a couple of MMA meetings. Uh, that was about but nothing. You know, we're all we're talking about the, we're all talking about the same things. Okay. Right. Yeah. I don't see any public on, so I don't think we have any public comments. Um, we need to vote on the colonial proposal for the aggregation process and timeline. Bob, you want to fill us in on that? Well, we've talked about it a couple times so far, and I don't know whether anybody has any more questions about it, but it's basically that Colonial is going to be waiting um, a, a little bit longer than they originally hoped in order to make sure that when we get the bids and when, the, we, when all the select boards, including us, are asked to accept the bid and join the aggregation, that we know what whatever source's next uh, uh, rate is going to be, what they're, what they're, what they're going to charge for the power. And we, um, Colonial was in a hurry because right now they felt that they could get a very low rate. The price of electricity is low because the price of oil and gas is low and the electricity usage is low and the bids that they're seeing are very low. And that's a good time for us to go out to bid. But if we got those bids, it would be before Eversource has released their rates. And so it, all of the selectmen basically convinced Colonial that the right thing to do is to wait, even if it's just a couple of weeks, but to wait a little bit until we go out to bid for power to make sure that we're accepting bids after we know what the Eversource rate is. And, and, and Colonial you know, laid out a proposal that, that that document that you got, and they would like all of the boards basically to express support for their current plan. And we're probably a month or two from actually forming the aggregation now. Right, yeah, it's gotta be, because you got 10 out of the 13 communities are Eversource communities. Uh, I, I think they're all Eversource communities. source? I'm pretty sure. We were at 14, and uh, I think the town of Beckett, they left, they, they switched from our aggregation to an aggregation out in the Berkshires. That they were, you know, they were physically a lot closer and felt more like, like, you know, they, they were thankful for all the education they got from us, but they, they joined another aggregation that was all, that's also a colonial aggregation and it was in the works. So it's all fine. But so now we're down to 13 from 14, but we're still plenty big enough to, to have a reasonable amount of power to be bidding on. Okay. You've got, uh, you've got Charlemont, New Salem and Warwick for national grid. Oh, if you, you, you know better than I do on that, John. So that could be. Well, I, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading their proposal. Okay. Okay. Uh, so when does I National Grid? When does when does National Grid determine their prices? They already well, know their prices. Already has. Yeah. Because their their price changes May one, whereas um, Eversource's rates change July one, but they'll know in the middle of May what the rate is. And it, it's 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 prudent for the towns to wait until they know what the ever source rate is. So that, yeah. that, that's good. But I, everything else Colonial's doing is fine. So I, I would, you know, I would vote on Colonial's proposal. Any other questions on that, Philip? Bob, Bob, you want us to vote yes on this, right? Yes, I want you to vote yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's, you know, right. I think it's a very small ask. You know, I mean, Colonial is doing doing what we want. It's okay. not comp not complicated. Okay. All right. No other questions on that. So, so All right. John, make, uh, are you asking for a second? I'll make I'll make a motion that we vote on Colonial's that we that we Vote on Colonial's proposal for the aggregation process and timeline. Do I have a second? 
I'll second it. All right. Philip, what do you vote? Yes. Okay, Robert? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Next item is our... Um, so, our John, technically that was just a vote to take a vote. I don't know if that... Your exact wording was... Well, we're, 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 we're approving. We're approving yeah. their timeline. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understood that's what we wanted to do, but okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, next is the town meeting vote to postpone. Have you all seen the, um, the recess and continuance that I wrote up for uh, Nick? Yeah, so um, uh, has this date been checked with the other towns in Frontier, first of all? Other towns, Philip, the other towns, uh, Deerfield is June 1 and Sunderland is June 5, and Waitley is still at April 28th. So yes, they have been checked. Good. Yeah. Okay, so um, my, my next question is, you know, um, the, this date, a, a, a couple of things. Like, first of all, I, I would like us to, to consider a framework or a policy so that we don't have to have these, it, 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 but there, there's a couple different things. First of all, um, I, I think we should we should agree that we're not going to ask town residents to gather until the state Depart board of health says that it's okay that that it's okay until they lift the the restrictions on gathering of more than ten people. All right. Well, what right? we can what we can do, Philip, we can we can recess continue for up to thirty days. That's all we can do. All right. So right. June 8th is the date. If on June 8th we can't gather, we can go for another 30 days. Right. So I, I don't I don't even I don't have a particular problem with the date or, or anything, John. But what, what I'm trying to say is that um, like w we should agree on a, a minimum period of notice for town residents. Like like t to me, the absolute minimum it would be something like um, the, the select board voting like no no 17 days out so um, like on a Thursday so that the, the town could send out postcards so the town residents could get m roughly two weeks advance notice um, All right that yeah uh, okay that's different than what this is we're, we're just voting to continue to the eighth right and, and what okay. i'm saying is that what i'm saying is that that we should have a policy so that we don't have to just keep doing this ad hoc um so so, so that um uh, you know it, it, if the board of health doesn't clear um uh, us to have a meeting uh, three weeks out that we automatically kick it down the road for another month all right what, what we'll do is we'll put on the agenda next week We'll discuss a policy for notice based on what the state does. Is that good? Yeah. Are you okay with something like that? Yeah, sure. Okay. But right now what we're doing is voting to push it out 28 days. Okay. And then, so, so the one other thing, John, is that um, j just about the location. So the, the, because what, 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 what seems like it might be likely or at least a good possibility is that the state says something like it's okay to meet in groups larger than 10, but you, we, but you still have to keep social distancing. And that in which case the school gymnasium is no longer the biggest room in the town. Now the, the, the new highway facility is. And All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll make that, we'll make that decision as it comes up. We don't know what's going to happen. It's two months from now, right? Right. All we're doing is pushing this out 28 days right now. That's all we're doing. We can make other changes to that. All right. Next week. All right. Next week. Yep. Yeah. And we'll put it on the we'll put it on the agenda next week, and we'll discuss those those nuances. All right. All right. All right. So I'll make a motion that we vote. Um, for the declaration of recess and continuance of the May 11th, 2020 ta annual town meeting to be pushed to June 8th. Do I have a second? 
Second. Yeah. Robert. Okay. Robert. Second. Yeah. Are you a yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Rob, you're a yes. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. So that's that's going to June eighth right now, and next week we'll discuss uh, further details. All right, uh, we're going to table the further discussion on the new uh, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grant. John, could you say why that is? Yeah, Peggy was going to come with some. Go ahead. Yeah, all right, Tom, you spoke to Peg on this, right? Uh, yeah, and, and, and Janet did as well. Um, there's not enough new information to give an update at this point. I did send you the um, the carbon study from, uh, was it uh, Williamstown? And uh, uh, Janet suggested that you look at that before, the, before we discuss it. So I did, I actually, I thought, I thought that you sent us to that because you wanted us to read 58 pages of that before we had this meeting. So I read my 58 pages. All right, Philip. Uh, Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and, and I, I, I thought that that did give enough to, to, to talk about because it sort of had a roadmap that was really interesting. And I, I'd really like to hear what people think about that. So. Right, well, I'm, I'm glad we're postponing it because I didn't get that notice until I lost power. So I would have to read it on my phone. And uh, all right. Yeah, it's try it's that. worth reading. So, yeah, good. All right. Especially the part where the towns get $2 million, got $2 million for not cutting their trees down. All right. We'll, we'll put it on the agenda for next week. Great. Okay. This is Priscilla right. Lynch. Can I just ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Priscilla. Hi, Priscilla. Hi. Did we get any more information on um, the grant that was awarded in terms of when they're going to begin doing things and any response from the state in terms of delay and time frames? I, I have not heard anything. Okay. Okay. I, I, yeah, I Anything Phil just that? sent me that material, so I am going to read it, but it is a lot of pages, so yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be a good discussion next week. Okay, if there's nothing else, then we'll, we'll go on to the next item. All right, send the town report before the warrant, Tom. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the best way to get the information that we're asking for town meeting to be postponed, and, and Nick has said he's amenable to whatever the select board decides to that. Um, and Lisa's uh, in the process of finishing up the town report now. And I thought that, um, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks, as we normally would, we could, we could send out the town report and have it, instead of having the, uh, the warrant, have an explanation of what's going on and how we're dealing with it and, and uh, how we'll get the warrant to them, you know, um, a couple of weeks before we do have the, the town meeting. All right, would you draft something, Tom, and we'll look at it at next, next week's meeting? Yeah, sure. It, I mean, I, it, some towns are using a reverse 911 for this, but not everybody signed up for that here. And sending out a town-wide mailing is um, the, the, really the only way we have of really reaching everybody and we could send out a separate mailing on this, but I was, so I was suggesting combining it with sending out the town report so that it was just one mailing. Yeah, that's fine. So it, yeah. It, in, in the meantime, I think just put, you know, putting the flyers up in the, at Baker's in the post office, that just announcing that it's been postponed and what the new date is. Oh yeah, 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 sure. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's about it. Okay. Anything else on that item? No. Okay. Uh, next item is the policy for reopening the warrant for the uh, Community Preservation Committee's recommendation on pandemic-related 
rent assistance? Yeah, this is um, an initiative that the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority is taking with some other towns that they're managing community development block grants for. Some towns have expressed interest in using CPC money for uh, rental assistance. Um, you know, affordable housing is one of the purposes of uh, community preservation. And so I was approached by the Housing and Redevelopment Authority to see whether or not we'd be interested. I gave uh, them Malcolm Corse's phone number as the chair of that committee uh, and have not heard back um, since I gave them that information. So I don't have anything substantive to propose at this point, but I, but it, this is serving notice that that's a possibility and that uh, the agency is in touch with our community preservation committee. Will, will they administer that? They administer what? Fuel assistance program for us? Uh, they do that mostly what we have with them is uh, we have two programs. We have a, a septic tank loan fund, and we have a, a housing rehabilitation fund, which is, uh, which is, it's also a loan, um, uh, but if, if uh, they don't really have to repay it, but if they don't, it becomes a lien on their house, which is fine with most people. Uh, but we've had a, a number of uh, homes refurbished and, and Conway renovated through these funds. It's a revolving fund, so when they pay it back, it goes back in, and another family can use it. So those are the those are the two main things that that they do for us now. But uh, yeah, they are also involved in fuel assistance. All right, so it makes sense for us to coordinate with them. They're already operating these programs for us. So so I, yeah, I mean, they, they, yeah. So can I say, I mean, I, I, I'm generally in favor of something like this, but I would suggest that we table this because I, I think that we ought to, unless it comes out of the CPC committee, we don't actually have anything to vote on and that it hasn't come out yeah. of that committee yet. Yeah, it, it'll be based yeah, on that, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. I, I, I have no information at this point. That, All right. I thought I said that. Yeah. When it, when it comes up, you know, it makes sense for us to go through um, housing and, and uh, redevelopment agency. All right, anything else on that? No. Nope. At the memorandum of agreement regarding the first responder quarantine facilities. Yeah, I, I do have some more information on that. Uh, I spoke with Chief Baker today. He'd been in touch with uh, the fire chief in Hadley, um, Chief Spankniebel there. And uh, uh, Chief Baker is advising that we not sign on at this point uh, for, for much the same reason that he gave last time, but it's a little bit more refined. There are about 11 towns that have joined in uh, in this project now. And what they do is they rent blocks of rooms uh, uh, at five at a time and there's a negotiated cost and there's a negotiated cost for cleaning when people have left. This is for first responders who have come in contact with a positive case and don't want to go home to their families uh, for fear of infecting them. So it's a, it's a space for quarantine and it's um, uh, theoretically it's very cheap. It's $27 a day, but that's for a block of five that you, that's for each of five rooms. And what they've said is they would not turn somebody away if we had not previously signed on to the MOA. So uh, if we came up with a system of very quickly signing the MOA with Hadley, then um, you know, in the case that one of our first responders did come in contact with a positive case, we could uh, we could move on that quickly. That would probably mean giving me the authority to sign the MOA at some point. So I, I like the sound of that. I mean, I read through all those documents. I, 
I, I did notice that as soon as you sign the MOA, you're obligating the town to, for the cost sharing that's all part of that, that MOA. But right. I, but I, and I also saw that, that um, you know, that, that if, it, if you do need, if you're not part of it and you do need to put, you know, one of your town um, employees in there, then you get treated as if you were, you know, you, you, you get whatever, it's prorated and you get treated as if you were part of it all along. So um, it makes sense to wait and pay and let's pay when we need it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I read that as well. The, uh, the only catch being that when it's needed, it will be needed on very short notice. Uh -huh. I'm fine with authorizing short notice permission. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that would Can work. Can we include that in, in what we vote on? Well, we're not, we're not going to sign it right now, but we're going to give Tom authority to sign it when we're needed. Is that what you're proposing? Yeah. yeah I mean, at, at the direction of the fire chief or the EMS director, yeah. Bob, do you have anything? No, I think that sounds good. I'd second that. All right, so we're going to read to this memorandum for first responder quarantine facilities. Uh, we're going to give authority to Tom to go move quickly on it if we have the, uh, the fire chief or um, if we have the fire chief say, he wants to go ahead. Yeah, if it's needed. Right. Yeah, or or, uh, if he says it's or the ambulance director. Or the ambulance director. Did anybody yeah. have any yeah. idea where, where these rooms are located? Yeah, it's the Econo Lodge. In Greenfield? No, Hadley. Hadley. In Hadley. Uh huh. Okay. But they can't use the pool. They can't use the facilities. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty grim. <laughs> it's a tough. It's not going to be able to use the pool, Philip. Yeah, yeah. I would hope not. If if they're there quarantining. No. All right. So I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I thought John already. Uh, Bob already seconded. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll second, second it. Yeah. I, well, All I. Right. Yeah. Well, I said I would. Right, Philip. Okay. Yes. All right, Robert. Yeah. And I'm a yes. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is our uh, highway maintenance building project, uh, accepting the bid. Thomas. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is the exciting moment. All the bids went out. Uh, the low bid came in with Kurtz, who were the people who did our shed for us. And, they, and uh, they were the ones that were most wanted by our committee, correct? Yes, indeed. And they, they came in substantially lower than the other two bids. So, so we're, I think we're pretty lucky there. And, and they have a deep, um, a pre and they have a deep appreciation for the tech school kids and uh, experience working with them on projects as well. So. That's good. Yeah. All right. Did everybody read through the agreement? Yeah. All right. We had our yeah, great. council give us uh, the okay on it. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. Contract. And it, if, if the motion could include the, uh, the amount, which is four hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred dollars. All right, I'll make a motion that we accept the bid for the highway maintenance building uh, contract at four hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred dollars uh, with uh, Kurtz Inc. Do I have a second? Yes. Philip seconded. Robert. Yeah. Philip. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, how, how did we get so lucky? You know, I mean, the, this is, is this highway, more of Walter's magic? Uh, yeah. The highway, 
maintenance facility committee wanted Kurtz to be the one to do this project. And I'm glad they came in the low bidder. Yeah. Very well with them on the, um, on the uh, storage building. Walter's the man. Walter's the man. I, I agree. All right. Uh, Tom, any items not anticipated? I do not have any. Okay. You have your update, Tom? Uh, yes, and sorry, I meant to email this out to you. There's just a few things. Um, I have set up a planning board Zoom account. Uh, they, they especially wanted one for their hearing. Uh, whoever, whoever the account is set up with, it gets it's their email that's the uh, that all the business is done through. So whoever gets the email gets all the related information, including bills, links to set up meetings, et cetera. So I've made that planning board at townofconway.com. They have their own email address. I can set up other accounts using the town credit card and town email accounts, but they'll have to be responsible for all related matters, such as billing, as all those are done via the email address. Right. Um, and as you pr probably know by now, um, the Board of Health voted to release information about COVID-19 in Conway. The good news there is that the one case that we had is now <clears throat> is now um, finished. So that's recovered. Uh, th th yeah, recovered. They've been released. That's great. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Let's see, uh, uh, the Finance Committee has, I think, I may have mentioned this before, maybe not. The Finance Committee has recommended a 1.6% increase for staff for FY21 based on the Social Security Index raise. This yeah, would you had, raise you had the, mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, this would raise the preliminary budget $9,786. Right. Uh, in departmental news, uh, work on the shed is still suspended, as it has been through the winter. There is more to be done, including installing electricity, which will be done after the maintenance facility is complete, as the electric lines are planned to go from the street to the maintenance building and then from the maintenance building to the shed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a little update on the shed there. Um, and in case we are not able to hold town meeting prior to July 1st, the accountant has provided a 1 12th budget for July, and I'm developing guidance for department heads and others with budgets based on the municipal relief bill and executive guidance. I'm also beginning to work on various percentage decreases in the town uh, operating budget um, based on projected revenue, projected lower revenues. Uh, it would make sense to come up with small, medium, and large percentage cuts that we can talk about as we gain a better understanding. Uh, we can go to a 112th FY20 budget, uh, but in a worst case, that could be more than the town can afford based on reduced revenue. Uh, that said, I am eagerly awaiting the state projections scheduled to be released tomorrow. After the Great Recession in 2009, I understand the state worked hard to keep the financial damage from, reading, from reaching state aid to cities and towns, but the financial damage to this could be quicker and in some ways more severe. So uh, we still don't know what the administration is going to do about state aid. So the state budget is one thing. We know the revenues are expected to go down. What the, what the administration does that relative to state aid to cities and towns, we still don't know. So looking forward to more perspective on that in the coming weeks. So and that's when, it. When, Tom, Tom just, just about the, the, the budget issue, just, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I think the jury's still out on how that's gonna affect school budgets. If you have to go to the 112th, specifically oh, yeah. whether or not, specifically whether or not um, that new state law trumps or uh, uh, negotiated contracts and um, 
um, and, and also um, um, w what's the impact if sort of some towns in a regional district are do pass a budget somehow if they decide to do a town meeting by Zoom or something and some towns don't. Uh, so, yeah. All, all grist for the mill. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to have um, hopefully some information over the next couple of weeks that will help us. Uh, you know, basically adjust our budget because obviously we're going to have to adjust it somehow. Uh, it's you know, no, no getting around it. That's one of the primary reasons why I wanted to uh, postpone the town meeting because we need to put a budget together that works and uh, we, we need state information to do that. So, I think the state's going to be in a quandary over the next month trying to figure out what they're going to do. So it's it's going to be uh, going to be interesting. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, anything about the 1.1 billion dollar that they set aside just a couple of months ago for the rainy day fund? Isn't this a rainy day? Well, I'm I'm sure they're going to be talking about some of that. You know, uh, maybe taking some of that out. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. we got like nine uh, billion. In it. <laughs> um, not sure it's that much, but. People are talking as though it's not going to be enough, whatever's in the rainy day fund. All right. So, but we'll see. Nobody knows. Uh, okay. Did we get any mail, Tom? Um, well, gee, that's a great question. Let me just uh, open this up. I don't think so. Uh, well, let's see. No, this is left over from before. That's the Mass Cultural Council. No, no new mail. Okay. Under announcements, um, Tom, you're going to have the warrants on the desk tomorrow for us to come in and sign? Yes. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Phil and I will be there. Bob is still in quarantine. Correct, Bob? Bob, are you still in quarantine? Sorry, I was muted. I I'm allowed out now. So I'm not. You're allowed out now. But Good. I, but but I am still down at the Cape, and because uh, my son is living in my house, and and uh, and he goes out to, as a fireman to the DCR every day, and and if I can, I'm a lot safer down here. So. Okay. I told Tom that if things are important, I can drive back to Conway and sign things or whatever. All right. Well, I, no, Phil and I can can sign the warrant. Yeah, but, but you can. Right. Right. So is, is, and is there any way that we can move towards um, allowing digital signatures? Yeah, yeah I'm working on that with Mike. Um, right. Yeah, we, we, we may have that by next week. Yeah, the, the school, the school's uh, frontier has just set that up for all their committees. Okay. Um, so, and I mean, you know, for instance, the, the, there, was a, there was a signature line on the warrants that you sent out that we could have just done that on computer release. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for next Monday, the 20th, via Zoom. Okay. okay. John, John, are you going to have the selectmen's comments? Oh, concerns of the selectmen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Bob. What do you have? That, so... Uh, uh, well, I was sitting here waiting for this as an opportunity to talk about something. And okay. I'm going to write up something that we can put on the town website. But when I was in Conway last week, I stopped in and I got the survey forms that that came back. That we put out a survey to understand what kind of power the people of Conway wanted for our aggregation. And I could have talked about this when we were talking about the, ag the aggregation, but I didn't want to get this confused with what Colonial is doing so this is something that we the town of Conway have control over what we want in the way especially of greener power options for the folks in Conway and okay. so we put out a survey and to me it's a really great example of how interested people here in Conway are at aggregation or at least in lowering their electricity bills um, we got back over 300 surveys of the 800 and whatever it is folks in Conway. So oh, that's, a, that's, a great, I, that's a great percentage. 
I've never heard of that kind of percentage. And so today I tallied up all of the, the four questions that we asked in the survey. The first question basically had to do with what kind of power would you, do you think you'll be, you'll get, you'll want, you know, will you want the cheapest power or the absolute greenest power or a compromise between cheap and green? And overwhelmingly people wanted the cheap and green option. Uh, the second question was, is locally generated power important to you? And very overwhelmingly people in Conway would really like it if we can purchase locally generated power. Uh, the third question had to do with how important is price stability to you? And that was not, that was listed as important, but not as not, not overwhelmingly, you know, not, not by a huge margin that price stability, they would rather it were cheaper or they would rather it were greener. Or there were a lot of things they preferred over stability. And the fourth one had to do with wood generation and w whether, whether we would want the aggregation to be purchasing electricity generated by burning wood. And, uh, and, and that was uh, that voted no by about a two to one margin that people oh, would good. really prefer. Okay. We, we don't buy power from uh, that was generated by burning wood. So anyway, I was thrilled. These were, these were the kind of results that I was really hoping the town of Conway would support. It's why we put out the survey. I'll write something up for the website, but I just thought you'd be interested in hearing about the survey. So Yeah, that, that's great. There weren't any surprises there. No. But, yeah. I, you know, I, the thing about this subject that's always impressed me is that it's, it's, for, for a year now, it's been sort of the most commonly asked about issue in town. I think there's not a week that goes by where somebody doesn't ask me about this. Um, and, and uh, I, you know, there, there's a fair amount of misinformation about it, too. I think the public meeting can't really come soon enough. But, um, but by and large, people have seemed really receptive to it. So. Well, you know, it's, it's been a long drawn out process because the DPU is very slow. Yeah, but it's always bad when when dragging your feet actually pays <clears throat> off. So this is this is a bad example of that happening. It encourages me to have bad behavior because I drag my feet about some things. So this was a time that dragging the DPU dragging their feet is good for us. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Any price other? of electricity is very low. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Any other business come before the board? Nope. Right. Uh, I just wanted to mention that that the uh, the contract for Kurtz is also on the table along with the warrants. There are two copies. Um, please sign both of them. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Okay. All right. Very good. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Have a second. Second. All right. Philip said second. Robert? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. All right. Thank you, guys.